A tale of deceit, guile, and treachery. The one true king is dead, and the once separated worlds of the Fae and Dran have collided. But in the chaos, lie secrets to unravel and untold treasures to claim. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're breaking down every known secret of the Imposter King. Before we start, a fair warning. This video will include a number of spoilers related to the Loesome storyline. In order to unpack the mysteries of that shattered world, we need to peel back the layers of its complex narrative, so if you don't want to spoil any of those moments, close the video and come back another time. For those who have completed the game or just don't care about spoilers, strap in because there's a lot to talk about. I can't think of a better place to start than with Feylin and Feyrin, the imposter kings that sit, one on the gold side and the other on the dark side. Killing an Imposter King is the key to completing the Loesome storyline, but depending on who you kill will reward you with different items. First, to gain access to the Imposter Kings, you'll need to find the two mural pieces, the Feylin mural mask and the Feyrin mural mask. To find the Feylin mask, also known as the Golden Mask, you'll need to search the main palace overworld. You'll always find this in a golden part of the palace, and it should be relatively easy to locate along your normal progression through the zones. On the other hand, the Feyrin Mask, also known as the Dark Mask, can only be found on the dark side, and it's a reward for correctly navigating the Joker's puzzle deep within the palace. At some point, you'll run into the Joker who will tempt you with a game of Follow the Card. Certain cards lead to certain outcomes, and we'll explore them all, but for now, your goal is to track and find the card with the Split Mask. These cards will eventually turn into doorways, and if you enter the door of the Split Mask, you'll be able to obtain the Feyrin Mural Piece. If you take these mask pieces back to the palace courtyard, you can activate the massive mural disc just outside the central chamber. By pulling the lever, you can transition the world from golden to dark, thus giving you access to both Fei Lin and Fei Rin. At this point, it's all about your dialogue interactions with the two imposter kings. Both world boss fights are epic, but as I said before, the rewards are different. If you choose to fight and defeat Fei Lin, you'll be rewarded with the Imposter's Heart, which you can use to turn into a long gun, Deceit. We actually talk about this weapon in one of our recent secret weapon videos, so to learn more about that powerful weapon, go check out the video. If you return to the Dark World and talk to Fei Rin after you vanquish the Golden Imposter, you'll be rewarded with Fei Rin's Sigil, a ring that generates 10% additional mod power from critical and weak spot hits. If you choose to fight and defeat Fei Rin, you'll be rewarded with the Melded Hill, which you can use to turn into the melee weapon, God Splitter. Its unique mod called Fracture grants charged attacks from the weapon the ability to taint the blood of enemies hit. For two seconds afterwards, all damage they receive will register as weak spot hits. If you return to the Golden World and talk to Fei Lin after you vanquish the Dark Imposter, you'll be rewarded with Fei Lin's Sigil, a ring that generates 10% additional mod power from melee damage. These rings will come into play again in the near future, but let's rewind to the Joker card game quickly. There are two other secrets tied to this mini event. If you track the Joker card and enter the doorway it creates, you'll be rewarded with the One-Eyed Joker Amulet, which has one of the most unique effects in the game. Whenever you neutral dodge backwards, you create a magic card lasting one second. If the card absorbs any enemy damage, you gain 25% crit chance for five seconds. The only downside is your neutral back dodge costs 30% more stamina. Neutral dodging is one of the game's most effective ways to avoid damage, and we talk about it at length in our Wish I Knew Sooner Tips and Tricks video, so if you haven't seen that, definitely go check it out. Backtracking again to the Joker event, if you track the Devil card and enter the doorway, it'll create an encounter with the Oathkeeper Aberration, which, if defeated, rewards the Misfortune Mutator. If you're building melee, this mutator is great, increasing melee damage dealt by 5% for every unique status effect on an enemy. One positive thing to note, unlike a lot of secrets in Remnant 2, so long as you don't choose the Split Mask card and doorway, you'll be able to scoop up all the extra rewards from this event. We're far from done with the Joker and his secret rewards. When you first meet him on the golden side, you'll be rewarded with the Magic Quill, an essential item for progression within Loesum. However, if you clap during his performance, you'll receive an amulet, the Jester's Bell, which increases mod and skill cast speed by 35%. Additionally, whenever you cast a skill or mod, it increases all damage by 20% for 15 seconds. But wait, there's more. If you return to that same pile of bones while on the dark side, you'll be able to scoop up another amulet, 
the Shade Bloom Crystal. You'll gain a flat 30% damage bonus, but every five seconds, that bonus switches between physical and elemental damage. The Joker is full of secrets, but at last, we have come to the end of his tricks. While you're traveling throughout Losum, keep your eyes peeled for a quest item called the Plain Ribbon. This is found within a castle tile set, often on the same map as this elegant statue. If you place the ribbon on the statue and then leave the zone and come back, it'll transform into an amulet. But depending on if you place the ribbon on the statue in the Golden World or the Dark World will determine the loot you receive. Since there's only one ribbon and there are two worlds, that means you can only receive one amulet per playthrough, so get comfortable re-rolling in adventure mode. If you place the ribbon on the statue in the Grey World, leave and then come back and pick it up, you'll be rewarded with the Silver Ribbon. This increases all skill damage by 25% and also grants haste whenever a skill is activated. If you place the ribbon on the statue in the Golden World, leave and then come back and pick it up, you'll be rewarded with the Golden Ribbon. This increases mod damage by 25% and also grants haste whenever activating a mod. Much like the Feylin and Feyrin sigils, these amulets will come into play again, but I urge you, patience, we'll get there. As you're progressing through Losum, you'll inevitably run into the Fey Council, a group of three that task you with uncovering who killed the one true king. You'll first encounter them on the golden side, but to unravel the mystery, you'll need to travel to the dark side. Keep progressing until you can re-enter the council chambers on the dark side, and there at the base of each of the council member seats are keys. You'll need to rearrange these to match the reflection on the golden side. If you do this correctly, the door behind the council will open and you'll have access to the chamber beyond. Inside sits the murdered one true king of the Fey. Climb up to the ledge and grab the assassin's seal ring, which reduces enemy awareness and increases damage dealt to enemies not targeting the wearer. From this ledge, you'll jump to the ledge behind the one true king's head and pull the dagger from the nape of his neck. Inspect the weapon, turn it until you can identify the symbol on the bottom of the hilt. You should know this does change depending on your playthrough, so you'll need to check it out each time you clear low sum. Make your way back to the council chambers on the golden side and consider your next two options. If you accuse the traitor accurately, you'll lose the assassin's blade item, but you'll be rewarded with the ornate blade melee weapon. If you accuse the wrong council member, either by choice or by error, you'll be forced to fight all three of them. You'll actually keep the Assassin's Blade quest item if this occurs, and be rewarded with the Fey Protector Signet if you manage to defeat them. The ring increases max health and stamina by 10, and reduces armor encumbrance by 5. There's one more layer to Losum's myriad of secrets, Namue, the goddess of the Fey. Not only is she your guide through both storylines, but she also holds a number of secret items that you can only craft if you have the prerequisite items or combinations of items, and let me tell you, most of these are time consuming to get. The first item, however, the Hexed Ward Ring, can be purchased the first time you meet Namue. No other items required, and it's actually incredibly useful when fighting the Red Prince to negate his curse effect during the entire fight. If you fought the Council and kept the Assassin's Blade, you can turn that into Namue for an actual melee weapon, the Assassin's Blade. The unique mod Bloodthirst increases damage by 25% against bleeding enemies and when attacking from behind. Charged attacks also deal 200 bleeding damage over 10 seconds. You'll want to scoop up this weapon as it's important for yet another secret. If you've defeated both Fei Lin and Fei Rin and obtained their sigils, Nam Yue will let you craft the One True King Sigil, an amulet that increases mod damage by 20%. It'll also increase the power of both Fei Lin and Fei Rin Sigil if they're equipped. Keep in mind, if you use the two sigils to craft the amulet, you'll then need to re-farm both rings in order to take full advantage of this effect, as they'll be consumed when crafting. If you've managed to obtain both the golden and silver ribbon amulets from the statue secret, you can combine them to craft Nam Yue's ribbon, which increases relic healing effectiveness by 50%. Activating a relic also grants haste for 25 seconds. Again, like the rings, you'll need to re-farm these if you craft the item. Namue also has a secret weapon that you can craft, the Rune Pistol. You can actually only get this when doing the Nightweaver storyline, but you have to have the perfect map RNG to make it happen. Progress as normal until you get to the Forsaken Quarter. On that map, you'll need to search for the dungeon, the Great Hall. Within that tile set, keep progressing until you reach the kitchens. There, you'll pick up the Ravenous Medallion. 
Step two is to continue progressing the Nightweaver storyline until you have the Soul Key tribute and can access the Nightweaver's web in the Moro Sanatorium. Enter the Nightweaver's realm and head to the first door on the left. There, you'll interact with the Tangled Web and select the Ravenous Medallion. You'll be rewarded with the Decrepit Rune, which you can take back to Namue in Namue's retreat, and she'll reward you with the Rune Pistol. The final Namue secret is one that is so RNG dependent, it took us over 300 combined hours to spawn properly. First, you can only complete this within a campaign, which means you might need to re-roll your campaign if things didn't shake out correctly. Then you'll need to get the override pin in Nerud. We actually talk about this as it's a prerequisite to getting the pulse rifle, so check out that video to learn exactly where you can find this quest item. Long story short, it's in an abandoned tower within the first Nerud overworld. You'll need to hold on to that item until you reach Losum, and if the RNG gods are smiling down on you, you'll get the Nightweaver storyline. At this point, things become a lot easier. Simply progress through the story until you can access the Nightweaver's realm. In that same tangled web, you'll sacrifice the override pin and be rewarded with a relic, the Tormented Heart, which gives you a flat 20% speed bonus. On use, this also deals 420 explosive damage to enemies within 10 meters, and life steals 25% of the damage dealt. However, if you bring this back to Namue, you'll be able to unlock her final secret. By offering her the Tormented Heart, you can craft the relic, Tranquil Heart, which grants two health regeneration per second, doubling all health regeneration by 15 seconds when used. This item actually perfectly pairs with the Miss Dodge Secret Evasion Maneuver we discussed in a recent video, mainly because every time you dodge, you lose health. It's a powerful synergy you should definitely look into. I'm sure at this point you're thinking, we're done, we have to be. But surprise, there's more to discover, and it all revolves around the Red Prince. This is another boss within Losum, and while it appears rather straightforward, there are, of course, secrets. When you first encounter the Red Prince, he'll ask you for a tribute. You can choose to immediately fight the boss using the aggressive dialogue choice, or turn in whatever Crimson King coins you have in your inventory. You'll get these when defeating the Fey Golden Knights, but here's the kicker. You need three to appease the Red Prince, and I can almost guarantee you'll only have up to two in your inventory, unless you continuously die and farm them. If you turn in less than three, you'll also have to fight him, and that's fine because your reward for defeating the boss is the Firestorm Weapon Mod, which creates a powerful fire cyclone dealing burning damage to anything, friend or foe, caught in the AoE. If you manage to farm out a third coin, you can offer them up as tribute. You'll avoid a fight with the prince, but he'll kill you in the process. Not great at first, but when you respawn, you'll have the Bloody Steel Splinter crafting material in your inventory. This can be turned into the weapon mod Blood Draw back in Ward 13, which allows you to shoot out razor-sharp chains, impaling up to five targets. Shortly after, the chains will pull all targets towards the player, dealing damage and applying a bleed dot. There's one more secret, and as you might suspect, it's the most intricate of them all. If you crafted the Assassin's Blade from Namue, you'll want to use it to land the killing blow on the Red Prince. If done correctly, you'll be rewarded with the Crown of the Red Prince, which has insane fire and blight resistance, but actually lowers bleed, lightning, and toxic resistances. Really though, it just looks awesome and is an insanely cool reward, a culmination of everything we work to discover throughout Losum. It's an exhausting amount of work, but Losum holds some of the coolest secrets in all of Remnant 2, and now you know exactly how to find each and every one, at least on this tile set. You better believe there's more to find in Remnant 2, and we'll be with you every step of the way, so if you appreciate all the work that goes into creating these videos, do me a solid, hit that thumbs up, and consider subscribing. It means a lot, it goes a long way to helping out the channel. You could also join us on Discord if you want to hang out with the team, talk about great games, and enter for your chance to win tons of free prizes. Right now, we're currently getting ready to give away multiple copies of Starfield, so as always, check out that link below. My name is Cody Yakin from everyone here at Legacy Gaming. Thanks for watching and play on.